G'day folks. Today I'm going to chase a few of my favourite fish species and that is the redfin. You may see in some of my YouTube video titles, I sometimes call them perch or redfin perch. And the reason for that is because redfin are quite popular in other parts of the world, particularly in Europe and the United States. Now they don't call them redfin over there, they often call them perch, sometimes English perch, sometimes redfin perch, but the most common name for these worldwide is just perch. But here in Australia, if we say perch, we could be referring to a silver perch or a golden perch or a Macquarie perch. So we call them redfin or reddies. Anyhow, today I'm going to chase some redfin. I'm fishing in my kayak, my Safari H2O Murray. I absolutely love this boat. I do have an affiliation with these guys. They've given me a boat and I've helped them out with a hell of a lot of photography over the years for their catalogues and stuff. So it's a semi-sponsorship. They are a brilliant boat. And can I just say, for anybody that's a little bit... Uh, weight challenged I suppose you could say the Murray the Murray kayak by Safari H2O is a great option because at my heaviest I was a whopping 150 kilograms now I'm down around 125 130 I'm still a big lad but even when I was at 150 kilograms this boat supported me perfectly so if you're a big bloke and you're thinking about getting into kayak fishing Go to www.rvaqualine.com.au and have a look at their product range, but in particular, the Murray. It's an ideal fishing boat for larger blokes. Anyway, I've got my esky in the back here. It's got plenty of ice in it because this is a redfin fishery. There's a lot of self-sustaining redfin in here. It's overpopulated with small redfin. So if I do catch some that are just getting that little bit bigger and I think my filleting skills are adequate, I might chuck them in the esky and take them home and eat them. I've got a bag here with some soft plastics and a few lures in. I've got the lures, the lures that I'm most likely to use first up at the front here near my feet. Of course, I've got my, uh, my life jacket. Life jackets are compulsory here in Victoria, even in a kayak. In New South Wales, you don't need to wear a life jacket in a kayak, provided you're less than 100 metres from the water's edge. This is a bum bag life jacket. So in a lot of photos, it looks like I'm not wearing a life jacket. This is supplied by PFD1. Now, PFD1 is the name of the organisation, but it is also a PFD1 rated kayak. I know, uh, sorry, PFD1 rated life jacket. Now, I know a few people are going to get on their keyboards and say those things are illegal. They're not. I checked. I looked into it. In Victoria and New South Wales, these are fine. They would not be PFD1 rated if we weren't allowed to use them. So they're PFD1 rated. They're comfortable to wear. You pull the cord and it pops up right in your face. I've actually got a video on how to use one of these, and you can check that out right here. I've got two rods. I've got my wild bait stick spooled up with monofilament line, which I'll be casting and re retrieving with soft plastics, bladed spinners and maybe little minnows. And I've got this, what I've got to change lures to something smaller. I haven't used this for a long time. This is a little, it's actually a Rex Hunt black label combo. If you happen to be watching this Rex Hunt, uh, thank your mother for the rabbits. Thank my father for your rabbits. <laughs> he didn't get you any. But anyway, it's a little Rex Hunt black label combo. It's got a Shimano Calcutta CT50 on it that I've had for about 20 odd years. Spooled with 20 pound braid and that is what I will use for trawling. So I've got a trawling rod and I've got a bait casting rod. I'm decked out, ready to go. Now I'm just going to put my, my deeper fish finder attachment on and that is just awesome. And then away we go fishing. Hey folks, check this out. If there is a more convenient system for using a fish finder in a kayak, then I need to know about it. You've seen in some of my other videos that I have an endorsement with deeper, deeper fish finders. I love these things. There's my deeper fish finder unit. Now I'm just going to come a bit closer to the screen here. You see this? That is a clamp. All you have to do is you screw this flexible arm into that clamp and then into the other end you screw the fish finder. So I've got the fish finder on one end and I've got the flexible arm on the other. I'm going to open that right up now and you just screw that to anywhere on the kayak that you want it to go. You can even screw it to the lid of your tackle box if you want to. You can screw it to your head. You can screw it to the carry handle at the front of the kayak. You can screw that anywhere and just dangle that out the side of your kayak and into the water. That is just, that is, that is using a fish finder from a kayak made very, very easy. What a fantastic invention. And I'm going to be using this out here today. Right, hey, folks, here's my fish finder. I've opened it right up. I'm going to clamp that on just there. Now that, obviously when I sit in the water, that's going to be above the water. I will then adjust that to where I want it. 
I can have it down there, right down there. I can have it up there. So I'll get in the water. I'll see where that's sitting, and then I'll just lower that down to where that needs to be. And then I'll have my mobile phone in a waterproof bag, which I've got with a clear case, sitting in my lap like that. And I'll be able to use my fish finder and just see how I'm going out there when I'm fishing. Rightio, folks, I'm just about to head off, but there's just one last thing that I wanted to mention, and that is the importance of preventing skin cancer. I've put on a nice broad-brimmed hat with a little towel thing you attach to the back. My dad actually bought me this a couple of years ago because he was concerned for me because I spend so much time in the sun. I put on a long sleeve shirt. This is my wild bait fishing shirt. I really like these. The tournament style shirts that so many people wear these days are fantastic as well. I find they get a little bit warm. I like these lighter weight material ones, but as long as you're covered, that's the main thing. And I've got a head sock on. Now, being an asthmatic, I don't normally wear these around my nose like that unless I have to. But I will say that one day at Lake Buffalo a few years ago, it was 41 degrees, and I swear to God that my flying fisherman head sock saved my life that day because I would have melted. Every 10 minutes, I'd dip it in the water, put it back over my head. And you can do that with these head socks. You can dip them in the water, put them over your head, and wear them around your neck, and that will help keep you cool. Or you can pull them right up and cover yourself to keep the sun off if the sun's on your face. This is my deeper fish sock. My fish sock. My deeper head sock. <laughs> But seriously, folks, I've got sunscreen on the legs. My arms are covered. I'm 41 years old, and some of the people that I grew up with in the late 1970s and throughout the 1980s and 1990s are no longer with us because they have passed away from various sorts of cancer. Some of them didn't even make it to 40. As you get older and you see people your own age dying of diseases that were your illnesses that we conceive that we're going to get when we get into our old age, when we see them passing away at our own age, it really starts to, to, to hit home the need to prevent cancer and to just be very cautious. So now that it's getting warmer, today's going to be 30 degrees, I'm going to get the glare and the reflection off the water hitting me in the face and on the legs. Now's the time to really start focusing on preventing skin cancer, folks. So make sure you're, you're all covered up so you can enjoy your fishing for longer because I don't want these fish to think that they're living in a robbie-free zone for a lot of years yet. <laughs> According to my deeper unit, it is 10.3 feet. Oh, there's a fish alarm just went off. There may be a fish under the kayak right now. And I've just cast right out there in front of the weeds. My deep official arm is telling me there's something directly under the kayak. So rather than cast, I'm just going to drop that down. Got him straight away. Look at that. The fish find it is always a nice red fin too. Oh, you little beauty. My fish alarm just went off and told me there was a fish finder directly under my kayak and then I dropped my soft plastic down and went bang and caught one. Now I've got another one. Look at that, this is the tell you what. The deeper unit doesn't lie. The deeper unit does not lie. Now, I like to kill my fish as quickly as possible, but I also know the importance when you're redfin fishing of getting the soft plastic straight back down under the school if there's a school there. There's a few young blokes just clowning around down here and jumping off the Tarzan swing and having the time of their life. I just hope that the speaker on these uh, sunglasses isn't picking up their language. Otherwise it might be a silent movie. <laughs> I don't mind hearing young blokes come out of the bush and swear like this. It doesn't offend me at all. 
when I hear them doing it at the supermarket in town around women and kids, that's when I tell them to pull their heads in. But out here in the bush, it doesn't bother me. big fish on here. The fish finder was going off. Whoa, there's another one behind it just as big. Tell you what, this is a good red fin. This is a really good fish. Might even use the fish grips on this bloke. They swallowed the plastic, I should be pretty right. Have a look at that. That is a good... He swallowed the soft plastic. That is a good 35 to 38 centimetre red fin. Caught on the Strike Tiger 2.5 inch curl tail grub. There it is, in white bait pearl colour. What a magnificent red fin. The deeper unit was going boing, boing and it's still going so with a bit of luck there might be another one down that's there. it for this adventure i've had a wonderful time on the water here i've been here about an hour and a half i only managed three fish but i've done what i set out to do so i'm happy and i'm going home that's probably the biggest perch i've caught the biggest redfin i've caught for quite a while that one he'd be nudging 40 centimeters at fish at least up around the high 30s but anyway folks thanks for watching i hope you've enjoyed it make sure you subscribe to my channel and feel free to share the love folks just share the love. Tell everyone. <laughs>